Okay, so earthquake and tsunami early warning is wonderful, but most high risk areas of the world have no warning system. And that's because it's simply too expensive to build and maintain the dense network of seismometers and GPS that you need for early warning. But what if we can monitor earthquakes with just consumer quality sensors? Your smartphone, your laptop, your tablet, your car, all of these things typically have both a MEMS accelerometer and a GPS on board. Now, how good are these devices? Well, the accelerometer on the phones are actually quite good with typical errors of around 0.031 meters per second squared. On the other hand, the GPS in your phone is quite bad at knowing where you are in the world. In fact, the absolute location errors are typically on the order of 10 meters. But that's okay. For studying earthquakes, we don't care where you are to within 10 meters. What we care is what is your displacement? What is your change in position? So we care not about accuracy, but precision. And the GPS in your phone is actually quite precise with precisions on the order of one to 10 centimeters. So we can test these by taking a device and subjecting it to a known motion as measured by an IMU, here shown with the black line. And for example, most smartphones use something called course acquisition code pseudo range based positioning. And an example of that is shown with the gray dash line. The gray dotted line is the accelerometer on a smartphone double integrated to displacement. Now both of those are quite horrible, but if you common filter them together, you get the cyan line. And all of a sudden, that starts to look a whole lot more like the input motion shown in black. Even better, some smartphones take advantage of phase smoothing or obtain real-time corrections from a satellite-based augmentation system, or SBAS, in which case, the quality of your displacements look like the red line. And that looks a whole lot like the input black motion. So the next step is obviously, let's go try and do some early warning with smartphones. So we were lucky enough to get funded by USAID's Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance to build a early warning system in Chile built entirely out of smartphones. And I like to refer to this project as phone in a box because our plan is you take a box and you put a phone in it, a nice waterproof box, a phone inside, an external GPS chip, a power supply, maybe slap a solar panel on top. The whole thing costs $350. And that means you can put out 100 stations for the same cost as installing one to two permanent GPS stations. Now, our plan is to put out 200 phones this year. So far, we've put out eight. And that's not the design specifications for the system. The idea is these things are terrible, but if you have a lot of them, it'll be OK. However, it turns out that there were two aftershocks of the Iapel earthquake that registered magnitude 5.5 or larger in the neighborhood of these eight phones that only will register on three of those eight phones, and we were able to detect, locate, get a magnitude, and produce a shake map for these earthquakes. Um, in, plot, in the first three plots, that's simply showing the location, the actual location in red, the location from the MEMS accelerometers on the smartphones in yellow, and the predicted ground motion and background color as a function of time after um, initial detection. The bottom right is how good that would be if we augmented it with the local seismometers, and on the far right, that is the actual USGS shake map. And so you can see we can get a very good and timely solution using just three smartphones. So this suggests that there is a tremendous potential to build specific monitoring networks with specific applications very cheaply with very cheap sensors. But what if we wanted to do crowdsourcing? What if we wanted to take advantage of the billion high precision GPS that are out there in the phones that everyone are carrying around? And that should, in theory, be excellent because in this really horrible to understand plot, the black lines are observations of displacement at various stations for various magnitude earthquakes, and the colored lines are the drift for various consumer devices. So any place the colored line is below a black line, that means you can observe that magnitude earthquake. And so you can see the red line is less than the magnitude 6 Parkfield earthquake. So your phone is absolutely capable of picking up GPS measurements that allow you to observe magnitude 6 and larger earthquakes. Unfortunately, you can't get the GPS data from your phone. Now you're probably thinking, what do you mean? I get GPS positions from my phone all the time. No, you don't. When you say, what is my position? Well, your phone queries the GPS chip. The GPS chip obtains a position, and then it filters the heck out of it and gives you a very filtered version of it, which pushes the, uh, the effective noise level all the way up to that light blue line that's the same level as a magnitude 9 earthquake. So if you wanted to get the high precision GPS that your phone is actually has on board and is using right now, you would have no way to do it unless Apple iOS or Google Android decided to add another API call that allowed you to actually get that GPS data off your phone. So the take home message from this talk is if anybody knows anyone who works at Apple or Google, please have them call me.